A CPU doesn't just randomly add and subtract numbers. It needs to know what to do and when to do it. Today, we will be adding an opcode decoder to our ALU and fleshing it out with all the features it needs to become the centerpiece of our custom CPU. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series, we are designing a Logisim simulation of an 8-bit CPU with the following design goals in mind. First, the CPU should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. Second, the CPU should be capable of complex operations. And third, the CPU should be easy to program. In the last video, we started designing our CPU's arithmetic logic unit and designed some circuits that can do both arithmetic and logic operations on two 8-bit numbers. In this video, we will complete the ALU by adding support for bit shifting, status flags, and operation selection. Let's begin with adding a bit shifter to our ALU. A bit shift operation is simply taking a binary number and moving each bit one place to the left or right. We will implement this operation in our ALU by using a circuit called a multiplexer. A multiplexer is a circuit that takes two or more input lines, gives an output line, and takes some additional inputs, telling us which input we want to pass along to the output. We can implement a simple 2 to 1 multiplexer using two AND gates and an OR gate. Depending on which select signal we turn on, a different input gets passed along to the output. For our bit shifter, we want a 3 to 1 multiplexer, which means we simply need to add another AND gate. Now we can simply add these 3 to 1 multiplexers to our ALU. We'll wire the ALU outputs to one of the multiplexer's inputs, and the other two inputs we'll wire directly to the B inputs of the ALU. Each of the multiplexers will now have an input tied to the ALU output, the B input bit to its left, and the B input bit to its right. If we want the ALU to output normally, we turn on the no shift input, and if we want a left or right shift operation, we turn on the left shift or right shift inputs respectively. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed that the multiplexers on either end of the ALU are missing an input. This is because on the left end of the B input, there is no bit to the left to serve as input, and vice versa for the rightmost bit. We can address this by simply connecting those inputs to the ALU's carry input. This will allow us to choose what value to shift into the result of the bit shift operation, which will be useful later. There's actually one more optimization we can make here that will make our circuit simpler to build when we want to build it with real transistors in the future. We can eliminate the need for a no-shift input by inverting the ALU's output and turning the corresponding AND gate into a NOR gate. Then, we can connect both the right-shift and left-shift inputs to this NOR gate. This effectively disables the ALU's normal output when we want to do a shift operation. We can further optimize this circuit by noticing that we can build an XOR gate with two NOR gates and an AND gate. This means we can simply replace our XOR gates with these expanded versions and use the final NOR gate of the XOR gate in place of the NOR gate in the multiplexer. This will reduce the number of gates we need to build in the physical version of the CPU because we will probably need to build all of our XOR gates out of simpler gates anyway since there really isn't a good way to build an XOR gate by itself. Our ALU can now do all the operations we need. Let's now turn our attention to decoding a 4-bit opcode. We can do this by building a decoder circuit and adding it to our ALU. Our decoder circuit will take as input a 4-bit opcode, and it will output a control word that will get mapped to the operational inputs of the ALU. We'll start by taking our opcode and making an inverted version of that opcode. Now we'll extend some wires for both the inverted and non-inverted opcodes. Below these wires, we'll place some AND gates, one for each operation we want to be able to decode. Recall that an AND gate outputs a 1 if all of its inputs are 1. So to detect whether we are doing an ADD operation, or operation 0, we can simply feed all of the inverted opcode bits to the first AND gate. This will turn that gate on only if the opcode is zero. For the add with carry operation, or operation one, we can connect the three highest bits of the inverted opcode and the lowest bit of the non-inverted opcode to the AND gate 
making that gate output 1 only if the opcode is 1. We can continue this pattern for all of the AND gates, making each gate output 1 only if the opcode corresponds with that gate's operation. To decide which of the AOU's inputs to activate for each operation, we'll connect each of those inputs to an OR gate. For the carry input, we have four possible options. We can either pass along the carry input we received externally, or we could input the leftmost or rightmost bit of the B input as a carry, or we could simply force the carry bit to 1. All four of these options will get their own OR gate, and we'll feed these OR gates outputs into another multiplexer to produce the final carry input we will give to the ALU. Now, for each operation, we connect the AND gate from the opcode decoder that corresponds to that operation to each of the OR gates that corresponds to an operation input we want to use for that operation. For example, for the ADD operation, we want the chameleon gates to be in XOR mode, and we also want to enable the A input. So we'll connect the AND gate for the ADD operation to those OR gates. The add with carry operation is the same as the add operation, except we want to also enable the carry input. Subtraction is the same as addition, except we want to invert the B bits and force the carry input to 1. And subtraction with borrow is the same as subtraction, except we want to enable the carry input instead of forcing it to 1. We can repeat this for all of the other operations we want. Once we get to bit shifts, the only real difference between the various kinds of bit shifts are the value that we want to shift into the result. Logical shifts shift in a zero, so we don't enable any of the carry options. Arithmetic right shifts shift in the leftmost bit of the B input, so we enable that carry. Rotate operations simply shift the value that was shifted out of the operand, so we enable the left or right carry depending on which shift we are doing. The rotate through carry shifts in the carry input we give to the ALU, so we will enable the carry enable for those operations. Here, we have an opportunity to do another optimization to our control logic. If we invert all of the outputs of the operation selector, turning the AND gates into NAND gates, then we have just inverted all of the inputs of the decoder's OR gates. Recall that an OR gate is equivalent to an AND gate that has had all of its inputs and outputs inverted. So we can change all of those OR gates into NAND gates. This performs the exact same logic that our circuit had before, but it uses inverting gates instead of non-inverting gates, which use less transistors when we build them. When designing digital logic circuits, it is always a good idea to look out for things like this since it is often possible to reduce the number of components we need to use when building a circuit by switching around the gates like this to avoid the use of non-inverting gates. Now, we have an ALU that can perform all of the 16 operations we want, and can select which operation to do based on a 4-bit opcode that we provide. We're not quite done yet, though, since we still need to have the ALU output some flags for our CPU to use for conditional branching. We will output four flags from the ALU. The carry flag will be 1 if the operation results in a carry out signal being generated. For bit shifts, the carry flag will be set if the value shifted out of the operand was 1. The zero flag will be 1 if the operation gave a result of 0. The negative flag will be set if the result was negative. And the overflow flag will be 1 if the operation resulted in an integer overflow. To implement the carry flag, we simply need to add another multiplexer to our ALU. This will select either the carry out signal from the ALU's adder or the left or right bit of the B input for shift operations. To generate the zero flag, we will take all of the output bits and NOR them together. The negative flag is very easy since a two's complement number is negative if the highest bit is one. The overflow flag is less intuitive we want the overflow flag to be set if two positive numbers add to a negative number, or if two negative numbers add to a positive number. It turns out that we can do this by XORing the carry out signals from the last two adder stages of the ALU's full adder. Now, our ALU is fully functional, and our CPU has everything it needs to do math and logic on 8-bit numbers. This ALU will form the central core of our processor. Everything else that we build later on will enable us to feed operands and opcodes to the ALU and do things with the results. 
We'll start doing this in the next video by learning how to build circuits that store numbers. This will give our CPU somewhere to put the results generated by the ALU so that we can use those results for future operations. Until then, feel free to play around in Logisim and see what you can create. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.